Hello, and welcome back to The Average. Today, I had the idea that you've read in the title of making some stamps out of the places within Howl's Moving Castle. Um, I recently reread Howl's Moving Castle, and I thought it'd be a really interesting, fun thing to do. Also, do you like this little thing? I was thinking of making it a sticker. Books and cats kind of girly, but I wanted to, like, help the kerning on that kind of girly bit there, because I think that's too crazy. We close together. Sorry, hectic start to the video, as usual. I was thinking I want to do like stamps for the areas, the different areas. So if you haven't read um, House Moon Castle and you just watched the incredible movie, I need a sharpener. And you know that there's different places within that universe, you know, the castle travels to. So we have a few different places and I noted them down on my iPad. So we have High Norland. <laughs> Why do you say it like that? Norland. High Norland, which is where the setting of House of Many Ways is. You might not know that Howl's Moving Castle is a trilogy of books. So the second book is called Castle in the Sky and it has different characters in it. Um, and I can't really remember that one because I didn't reread that one recently. I've only reread Howl's Moving Castle and House of Many Ways. So House of Many Ways is the third book in the trilogy and I always thought it was the second but it's the third and it does feature Howl and Sophie in it as well. So if you're into Howl's Moving Castle it might be worth reading that third book but also you should probably know that um, the books are very different to the movie in the sense that there's some added story bits in there that just are left out of the 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 film which you know happens makes sense and it's like the witch of the waste um she becomes kind of like a good character in the in in the film but in in the book she's kind of more the antagonist the whole time of this this story and she doesn't really uh have that kind of quality in the the Ghibli film which I think is really interesting because it kind of I always find that with kind of Japanese media that evil characters they always have like a good side to them there's never just evil and good whereas like in other you know western media if you call it that there is a sense of black and white and not everything is you know straight up there's no, there's no like grey lines there. This person's evil because they're evil. I mean, more recently we've had more complex evil characters, but you know, it's just something I noticed which I thought was interesting. Someone had mocked up the map area of Ingri, which is the place where all of these stories take place. And um, Ingri, not Ingrigir. And this is High Norland, right? And then we have like Kingsbury down here which is where in the film Sophie travels to see the king and she goes to the castle and stuff. So then there's the waste down here, which is where the witch of the waste lives, surprisingly. We also have down here, which is like the ocean, and we have the port here, which is Port Haven, which if you remember in the movie, they have that uh, Hal's assistant is a little boy, whereas in the books, he's kind of more grown up. He's probably like a, a teen, late teenager, university kind of age um and he opens the port haven door and he puts on that little beard and it's so cute anyway we have also market chipping which i think is about here on this map that someone mocked up i hope this is a really really random crappy map but i hope it gives you kind of, kind of some portrayal of like this universe so i wanted to focus on making some stamps for this these different areas so in our society or generally around the world we have these stamps and they all have different nature and different designs and I thought it would be really nice to do like a set of stamps that all relate and have something to do with each other so I really wanted to just focus on maybe a couple of these places because just to start off with and if I enjoy the process maybe I'll continue doing it but uh, I was thinking the waste would be a really fun one to do and in the book it's described as being this place where no one dares to venture and it's like nothing grows there there's only hot sun and it's got packed clay everywhere and the witch of the waste lives in a castle 
A spindly castle, it's described, made of clay pots. So I'm imagining that it's like, <laughs> weirdly like clay pots stacked on each other somehow. I'm not really sure how that works visually, but something, you know, something like this maybe. And it's like spindly. Spindly, I imagine, is like a spire. So it's kind of like... And... So there's a lot of packed clay and browns and I imagined sort of deserty fauna. So maybe some cactuses? Or is that more... I don't know if that would work, but that's where my mind is going. So if I look at like some stamps that I've collected online, I've done like a Pinterest board of stamps that I found really interesting to look at and I'll just show you what I mean. So here is some stamps that I thought were really cool and it would be really nice to emulate them. Like this kind of classic style and it would be really nice to focus on the fauna and maybe like the cracked clay. I really like this Japanese style of stamp where they have the little individual iconography areas and different style of like placement which is interesting and, and I like that because there's no rule I guess to a stamp except for maybe having the price on it. Um, and also the area where it comes from. So we'd have maybe the waist here in some sort of typography. And this is just me doing a rough design layout because I realize that sometimes I don't really just show you guys a really rough process and this is super rough. So you can kind of get an idea of how my brain works. But if we see, look at these Pinterest ideas again. It's really nice. I really like this this one where it has the different icons, but I don't know if that would really work for the waist. It might be interesting because, like, theoretically, if no one goes to the waist, why is there a stamp for the waist? Like, who's the witch of the waist sending letters to? <laughs> it doesn't make sense, but it's fun. It's a fun... Uh, task I guess a, a fun design task as well because you're actually thinking about graphic design in this sense this is graphic design rather than illustration but it's kind of a mix of two right so we're thinking we need all the information on there so we want the name of the place okay the waste and what features does this place have it has this cold evenings I guess because all deserts have freezing freezing nights but it has a really hot sunny day and maybe we can use a sun icon in there to indicate like the weather and maybe that's something we could use for different stamps that we have so if we do a set of three stamps maybe like the weather could be indicated on all of them so then they're all coming from the same universe and it would just be fun to play with for instance if we did like the port haven which is obviously a port city we could do like sea waves or something in this like iconography area so we can have a little icon here of something to do with the kind of landscape that this is involving and then here we could have some sort of imagery similar to this one maybe maybe not we could have some sort of imagery of the place so we could do like cracked earth here which could be nice, but obviously think about it a bit more than just cracks. <laughs> and then maybe we could have some fauna or something here. Oh, we want the price as well. So down here could be where the price is, which is a bit too similar to that one. So maybe we should just like explore some options. I really like this one as well. I just think it's so interesting. I, I really love that kind of block print aesthetic that some of these stamps have so that would be really interesting to play into as well so maybe we could do that maybe we could just add some little like block printing style I see myself doing these stamps with Poscas so that could be quite interesting okay I'm just gonna ruminate a little bit more on these ideas and uh, we'll get started in the next clip so these are sort of my ideas I don't know if you can see that on the camera but I've just been sketching out some ideas. So the first idea is the waste. And the reason that I'm doing the waste and Port Haven and not like 
market shipping where Sophie's from that you see in the movie that's very European, like this marketplace, is because I just wanted to do something different and I know as well that these places are going to be really different from each other so it would be interesting to see the the different routes I could take for each design. So I want to do like this kind of layout and then this iconography of what the weather was like as we discussed. Then I was thinking that they could do like what each resource would be good, like what resource comes from these places. So Port Haven is obviously a port town, um, so it's probably more trading, but I would like to do like a fish because it's obviously probably a fishing town. And then in this little section, I wanted to do maybe a sort of imagery like we have of Mount Fuji in this stamp or, you know, lots of examples of these places. So I want to do like a shot of like the place. So we're going to have like the wasteland here and then we've got the prices. Then, yeah, just trying to lean into that kind of iconography classic like banner here. And yeah, so let's get into drawing the final ones. So I thought maybe we can make these a bit bigger for the final designs because it makes more sense. I have a handy business card that would be the perfect size. Would it be the perfect size or is that too small? Might be too small. Because I think like if I work bigger and then I can scale it down, if I want to make stickers of them, if I like them, um, that would be more appropriate, right? So let's make them big. Um, maybe postcard size. I have my post, one of my postcards here. So that could be, yeah. And we're just gonna draw around this postcard because it works, you know? Um, if you haven't been around my channel a long time or anything basically what I like using is this really cheap printer paper and I know people are like screaming at me from behind the camera lens or some people are but I don't care I like using it and I've used cheap printer paper for all my comics and I enjoy the way that markers alcohol markers because I think that's what I'm gonna use for this I was thinking Posca's but I think alcohol markers will be cool um, I enjoy the way that they look when they bleed on this paper because it's just kind of, you know, it just, I don't know how to describe it. I am not a wordsmith. I want to be, but I'm not. Uh, where are my pens? That's a good question, isn't it? They were under a stack of towels, <laughs> as you do. So I'm just gonna, first of all, grab some colors that I think would work. Let's do the waist first. So I want to do like orangey browns. Just trying to think what like a good color scheme might be. Like. And also like, of course, these are not going to be the exact colors. So we'll test them out first. Maybe like, yeah, just orangey browns basically. And I will put these aside in case I need to pick up anything else. Maybe a purple in there for a pop. Maybe that's too dark that purple. Let's see what that colour scheme looks like. Uh, so I just want to, yeah, swatch these. <laughs> Everyone knows I hate swatching, but I think if you're going to do a colour scheme, you need to know if they work well together. So it does make sense to swatch sometimes, guys. Also, not swatching and writing down the colours of each thing sort of came back to haunt me when I was doing my comics because... I would be like, wait, what colour was this? Uh, and I su do suggest writing down all the colours that you are using for your scenes because it makes sense. I think this is very dark, this one. So what we'll do is we'll use that only if we have to. I'm not really sure. Maybe on the borders and stuff, it might be a nice, like, line to use. Not sure, not sure. I don't know why I pulled this grey out. So it's also going to be too dark, I think. Yeah, we could use it for something. This is going to be our neutral. I'm trying to think where each colour might go on this scheme. I think we need a yellow as well. This one's too dark, for sure. Um, I think that might be a good, better version than, than this one. So I'm going to put this dark one away. And I think these oranges are too similar as well. 
these two oranges. I like the brighter one more. And of course, classic me. I can't remember which one is which. Oh no, that's that one. Okay. This one is, I think that's their one. Actually, let's line them up so I can see how they look side by side. Because I think on the stamp, they're going to be very close quarter colours. And you know when colours next to each other, they kind of change uh, how they look. It's looking nice. That, that next to that kind of looks a bit murkier, but meh. That's what we're going for. It's the waste, right? We want, we want kind of murkiness, I guess. All right. Let's use these. Dun, 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 dun. Let's get back to my sketch. Well, my missing sketch. And I think what I want to do is just color straight off. Because I have my design here. So if I can be smart enough, maybe I can block this out without having to draw any lines. Maybe if I just do some light ones. Because I'm not that intelligent. <laughs> I'm like, I could do it. Mm, no, you can't. Sometimes it's good to have a little self-awareness. I feel like this video is going to be super long, but maybe it's nice to have one in the background whilst you're working. So it's going to be a bit wonky because that's just kind of my style. And you might call it laziness, but I call it laziness with a flair. Um, yeah. Okay, so up here we're going to have the waist. I like how it overlaps these squares as well, the the in curve <laughs> the in curve of these lines so I've got the squares here this is going to be so wonky and I'm just not that kind of designer where everything is like perfect I'm just very haphazard so good luck to us good luck to us and anyone who hates this kind of style <laughs> I guess Okay, so the sun, I really like this kind of oof, idea of these rays of light just coming like this. And then we can just have the waist up here. I want to do like a nice typography, but I need to just write out the waist. Otherwise, I won't be able to fit it. It will be like that thing where you start writing and then the letters just get smaller and smaller. Roughly, that's looking fine. I want to make that the type a bit better than this, obviously font or it might be quite nice doing it like my rough kind of style although <laughs> that just sounds like I'm being lazy again uh, but I think it might be fun like for this I did like this rough kind of handwritten type face or camp crystal lake like not that typeface but that kind of style where it's a bit you can tell that it's homemade <laughs> And that means that it's homemade with love kind of style. <laughs> mm. Anyway, and then I want the price here. And I, like I said, I want the price to be so expensive. Because where are the stamps coming from? Like, why? That would be crazy to send. Because the witch of the waste is the only person living in the waste. So it's going to be crazy to try and send her a letter. And who's delivering that, you know? So it's going to be expensive. So it's going to cost 100 whatever the currency is in Ingery. Because I did try to look it up online. And I remember maybe they mention it in the book. Um, but I, I can't for the life of me remember what she called it. It's probably something very like European-y fantasy land. But, you know, this is the current layout. And it might... Wow, well, you can't even see... But we'll get there, guys. <laughs> this is the current layout, and... Okay, so this is what the colours look like. I feel like this is going to be our dominant colour, this kind of sand one. So let's just do each block. This dominant sand colour. It's actually called Brown Grey, which I've never heard a worse name for a colour in my life. It sounds like the most boring <laughs> colour that could be a colour ever. But there we go, we're using it. We're giving it its chance. Okay. And then I think these terracotta pots are going to be this red. I feel like that's too bright for terracotta pot. Maybe we could mix it. Okay, let's just do the background. 
this grey as well. It's gonna be cute, I think. Just, just visualize it, guys. Don't worry about it right now. Like, obviously, brown grey is not the colour for us, but it could be. We could let it be. It's kind of like giving goldeny, golden vibes. Goldeny, golden vibes. You know what I'm saying. Okay, kind of touched there, and that's bothering me. So what I'm going to do is just shrink this box down a bit here. The price. I think that's going to be in white. And let's do like a darker. This one is this color, right? Yes. All right, let's try it. Monksville. And if you're saying, no, Steph, that doesn't look cute. How dare you, okay? How very dare you? I'm trying my best, sort of. I'm trying. <laughs> Oh no, I've gone for that. I went for that without thinking. Oh no, that's going to look terrible. Why have I done that? Okay, the whole background is going to be this colour. <laughs> it's all going to be this colour, guys. Is that going to look stupid? Oh, I've done it now. So, whatever. What can you do? I regret my decision. And I kept going. But... Sometimes you just gotta lean into the mistakes and just be like, fine, you win. You win mistake. I will make all the background this orange color, fine. And let's see what it's looking like. Okay, I love it. Sorry guys, if you hate it, I love it. I'm doing my method where I'll color in on this side of the paper and then I'll flip it over. And you're probably thinking, but Steph, then all the, the colors are gonna be all the letters and stuff are going to be reversed. <laughs> You're probably right. I haven't thought that through. But we can always flip around on Photoshop. It's all good. Okay, let's see how it's looking. I think we need like a, a sky colour as well. I like it so far. I really like this like weird bleeding. It looks like it's printed weirdly. I don't know. like that. Maybe I'm weird. The sun. The sun. Yes. Okay. This bright orange. So we've got this blue-grey to go with our brown-grey, and I think it will work. Yes, I like that colour. Okay. It's going to be the sky colour for this bit, and for the sun. Uh, I should wait for that to dry, because it's going to bleed. Uh, not in a nice way. I've noticed as well, like, all my references... Uh, the stamp references that I showed you, they all have one colour which is something I didn't even think about until just this second and uh, I think it looks nice and I've made a mistake but it's too late, it's fine I want to do those lines like you see on a stamp but I'm not sure if it's going to look cute I was thinking of this dark that I said I wouldn't use but it might be quite cute to use it here, behind these pots. Ugh, am I going to do this? Do I want to do it this way? Yeah, I'm going to do it that way. Ugh. Oh my god, please be careful. Okay, we're back. Uh, my camera died for a bit, so I just needed to charge the battery, but in the meantime, I sketched out some more ideas. I also had some ideas to add some kind of magic sparks or something to this image, because it is set in a magical world. So I thought it would make sense, so I'm thinking either white or a bright pink to do some sort of like shapes like this in and around the pots would be fun but I don't know if it would be too much but anyway so this is how it's looking so far let's keep going 
just really, really simplifying some of these shapes. And what we'll do is like when I turn it over, it's going to look hopefully <laughs> nice. And I think I want to do it in this <laughs> brown gray color. And I just want to. I don't want to, I don't want to, we've got to chill a little bit sometimes, you know, when you're drawing stuff. You can put too much pressure sometimes, so I just got to learn to just be like, okay, you can't make it perfect, so just attempt to do it anyway. Okay, and we'll do some circles on here, just to match the top. So that's kind of what it's looking like. Oh, I want to put blue here, actually. So now I'm going to use my favorite pencils which are these Faber Castell ones maybe we can do oh maybe we could do like a shape like with this color I think that would be cool actually instead of the Posca let's just go in and make like I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for you guys like these magical shapes like this clay comes from the waste which is a magical land like all of Ingri, but still, you can still have a little bit of fun with the, the idea of that. Okay, maybe that looks kind of cool. There we go. And yeah, I want to use brown maybe to as a liner to line some of these. Yeah. Add some little details. Okay. I accidentally went over this line here with the brown, but I think what I'll do is I'll Photoshop that out so that it will look cleaner. Okay, magical clay pot, so you go. <laughs> uh, I need to sharpen this for... <sighs> Clear as well, it's like touching. So we can, you know, if you make a mistake, it's easy to clean it up on Photoshop. If you so wish. I really like the idea of this one layering over the zero for some reason, I don't know why. It's looking quite cute so far. I need to do something with the sun, I'm not sure if it's working. It doesn't necessarily look like a sun, but it can be like the iconography of the area still. There you go, that's the first stamp. We need to do the line on the outside. And I think what I'm going to do is do like a light colour wash of grey for that to indicate where these might be, if that makes sense. So. Just very rough. markers Yeah, that one's a little bit long, uh, further apart, but it's fine. It's just a frame of reference. Okay, that's kind of the idea. Um, also, do I want to add any shadows? 
And I know, let me see. It's probably a weird thing to add on a stamp though, but I've already done it like so, like t maybe too detailed anyway. So I could just add some shadows. Just here and there. I think it'll like look cute when it's shrunken, shrunken, which I will definitely still show you at the end. Okay, I'm gonna sharpen my pencil a bit because this is gonna be the nerve wracking bit. <laughs> Don't know why it's nerve wracking because I've already put the shapes here. But I guess this is like gonna be the final show of what the stamp looks like because I think this makes it all come together these little I don't know what you would call them like indented perforated edges <laughs> definitely much wonkier this side And I've added way too many on this side. I don't know why I didn't like pay <laughs> attention to the spacing here, but I'm sure it's fine. Uh, I want to just rub them out slightly so they're not super in your face. Okay, so there we go, there's our first stamp. So I just want you to imagine it small and we'll see what it looks like. Uh, let's get going on the last one because I realized that doing three was probably a bit ambitious of me. So we're just gonna do two, but they're still fun. Maybe I'll do more in the future because I'm kind of liking this idea. Uh, so now we need to do a color theory, color theory color concept for this one as well and I want it to match slightly these are some colors that shouted out to me so let's try them together and so there's this blue from this one which would be kind of nice to use to indicate like the the design family of this set yeah I like that one okay so I'm going to use actually this one that we used on this one as the base. I guess this one, yeah. Like I did the same base, but this one's going to be slightly different, but similar. So I've got a line on the outside, so I've got to remember that so I don't go over it. Why? I went over that line again. Oh well, it's going to be fine. And what colour was this one? I like this one for the outline. It's like bright green. Well, it's not bright green. It's like an emerald green. It's not bright, but it's in the bright in the sense that if you saw the Emerald Palace, it would be bright. <laughs> if that made sense. Uh, I've done the same thing where I've got the area of the iconography, and then the landscape, then the price, then the fish. Which is fun, I think it's fun. Uh, the fish. I want to have the fish background be this colour, I think. So it stands out. This paper has come back to bite me because those houses got completely eaten up. That's fine, we can use that. Uh, I might need to make the sky the same colour, actually. There you go, looks kind of cool. Then we want this typography I use in very wide terms to be the same colour as a background as I've done with this other one. Hmm, yes, I think grey. I think even though grey is not like the nicest colour, I think it makes sense. And I think it'll look good with this colour scheme. Let's make him a little bit glimmery. A little bit shimmery. Okay, eyeball. Things. Some 
color and maybe something like light pink just a really subtle or maybe like yeah okay then what then we need to do the C okay well, let's get pencil in I want to use a black this time or do I want to use a stark blue that would kind of be a nice contrast to this brown yeah yeah I'm gonna use that my life drawing teacher in university once said that there's nothing more beautiful than a straight line drawn without a, a ruler and I couldn't agree more. There's something very satisfying about it. It's in perfect perfectness. I feel like for this one I want the there to be these lines in the background. Sometimes I just say things and then I start doing them and I'm like, did you even think about this? Maybe we have a little shadow behind a fish here. A little shadow action. Now that it looks weird. If it looks weird, then that's fine. Sometimes these things happen. Like, I, mean, I want these like shapes that we have in this image, where it's kind of like, come on, guys, we live in a magical world, so we're gonna have a little bit of magical elements to this. I did that thing again where I just started going for it with this image and uh, I have no idea what that was just a little wave of wave <laughs> hopefully it looks fine let's just indicate some sort of village here some greenery it's going to be too small to be readable anyway I think so Ooh, that hurt my hand a bit. Don't know why. Oh, I've done these lines. Now I have to. I have to do them everywhere. I forgot that I did that. Will they even line up? That's a problem. If they don't line up, I just I really don't want to hear it, guys. <laughs> we need to do a line in the middle here. Okay, that's fine. That's jolly well fine. Okay. I think it makes sense because it's very visually indicative of a stamp so we need to have some lines on here to be more stamp like I wonder why stamps have all this stuff on them I guess it's similar to money isn't it where they have to have all these intricate designs on it so people can't falsify it so it does make sense although this is a magical world so I guess people could falsify it or they could also send messages in other ways but not everyone is magical in this world, guys, and hey, there are some normals out there. There we go, that looks kind of cool. Now we just need to do a stamp outline. And I'll do my same technique with the pen and try to have similar shapes on each side, because we failed last time, but it doesn't matter, it still looks okay. Not everything can be perfect. Already failed. Okay, so let's do the stamps. There we go. Cool. Yeah. I like it. I think I want to add some of that pink pencil that I have here somewhere. Where though? Maybe here? I like that though. I like that it's white. I, I, I said I like it and then my hands just were like, no. Tough. Um, maybe a bit more here. 
I think it's a nice contrast, like pop of color with this pink. Yeah, I think that's it. I think um, what I'm going to do now is just scan these in and then mess around with them in Photoshop and we'll see what they look like. Ah. And that's the video. Um, I hope you liked it. Let me know if you want to see more stamps. It was fun to do. Maybe I'll do some more and maybe some of a different universe. So suggest in the comments what books I should read and uh, explore that idea of. But I hope you liked this video. It was fun to do. And I hope to see you guys next time. Please like and subscribe as always. Really helps me out. And thank you. Bye.